Hello and welcome again to Encouraging Words. Through the encouragement of the scriptures, we receive hope. So I just know this time is going to be a good time of encouragement, of hope, hearing God's word, learning, growing, being changed and transformed. I hope you have your Bible right next to you. If you don't, go ahead and grab it. Use your phone, your computer, your tablet, whatever you have that contains and holds God's word. Let's use that right now. Let's pray and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, bless this time. This is not a waste of time. May it be fruitful, encouraging. Bless us with hope. Bless us with your goodness. Lord, we come to you with an attitude of faith and belief, ready to follow, ready to do what you show us. Help us, as always, to do what you're calling us to do. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to teach us, to bring into remembrance God's word, and lead us into all truth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to pick up where we last left off. That's the, gos the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verse 1. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the traditions of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Nothing wrong with washing your hands before you eat. It's a good hygienic habit to practice due to the COVID-19 uh, spreading and pandemic, the general public is advised to wash their hands often. So washing your hands can reduce the spread of disease. So, so what's the problem, right? The problem, at least from the perspective of the scribes and Pharisees, is the act of washing uh, their hands properly before a meal must be observed because it is a tradition of the elders that includes uh, your hands when returning from the market your cups your pots your your copper vessels and your dining couches you gotta wash it and clean it all because it's a tradition there's a proper way and there's a wrong way there's a pattern and there's a prayer to follow and if you don't do it the right way, then it's all wrong. You're basically a sinner before God. There's a specific way to pour the water. And there's a specific way on how to rub your hands. And there's a specific prayer to recite. You get any of that wrong, it's all wrong. You have to do it this way because that's the way we've always done it. And that's what tradition does. It makes a practice into a ritual. It takes a man-made rule and makes it mandatory. Did God say it or does man say it? We must be in the habit of asking that question. Is this from God or is this from man? What does God's word have to say about this tradition? Let's hear what Jesus says next. Verse 6, and he said to them, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, the people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. Notice Jesus points out their heart is far from the Lord. He does it by quoting the prophet Isaiah. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They say all the right words, they have all the right clothes on, and they act out all the rituals, 
but their heart is far from God. It's vain worship. It's empty. It's self-loving performance. It's missing humility, reverence, and love for the Lord. The scribes and Pharisees are more interested in the commandments of men than in the commandments of God. Probably because the traditions of men expect less than God's word, God's command. God calls for holiness. You know, man looks for works to feel good about self, right? God calls for righteousness. Man looks for ways to boast in his achievements. God wants to transform heart, but man wants to indulge in the pleasures of the body and the riches of the world. What does God require? He required for the, he required the priest to clean themselves before they entered the tabernacle or the temple. But that wasn't for everyone, that was for the priests. The tradition of washing hands before a meal was not from God. God is not demanding we follow the traditions of men. God is more concerned with our heart, a spirit broken, honest, and apologetic before him. What started off as a command to the priest has now changed into a command for everyone. And God didn't say it. God didn't say to do that. Verse 9, and he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. The question asked to Jesus was, why do your disciples not walk in according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He started by quoting the prophet Isaiah, and now he's quoting Moses. Tradition for the scribes and Pharisees has taken place of God's word and made it so the hearts, their hearts are far from him. God's word, man's traditions have become greater than God's word. The law of God is clear, honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, the promise of long life. Also commanded in scriptures, whoever reviles father or mother must surely die pretty clear uh, command and its consequences. God wants us to obey our parents when we are young and honor our parents as adults. But notice the traditions of men have created a loophole. Just tell your parents Corbin, meaning my money, my gifts are now devoted to God. Now you don't have to worry about honoring your father and mother. It's okay, you can give your money to us because you, when you give it to us, you're truly giving it to God. God will forgive you because you're giving to us. Remember, you're truly giving to God through us. They make void, empty the word of God in preferential treatment of their traditions. And Jesus goes on to say, and, 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 and many such things you do. They have a fine way of rejecting God's commands in order to establish their traditions. They are sly, you know, clever and cunning. They evade and avoid. They care more about traditions than God's word. They care more about money than their parents. They care more about the speck in their brother's eye instead of the log in their own eye. For if they were to remove the log from their eye, 
examine themselves and confess their wrongs, then they are in a position to help and not harm. Instead, they're just looking for faults in other people. Verse 14, And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. Uh, verse 16 is not found in some of the best early manuscripts. Verse 16, if it's in your Bible, it says, If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. I mean, look for the spiritual understanding. You see, they're thinking about all the things on the outside that defile. Like food, that's a big one. We, you can't eat pork. If, if, if we eat pork, then we're sinning against God. And other foods like rabbit or shrimp are forbidden to eat, and there's others. They have been, been raised to not defile their body by eating the wrong foods. Jesus says, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. How can that be? He, Jesus is completely changing their paradigm, their worldview, their way of thinking. They are not raised to think this way. It's easy for us to think uh, that these religious leaders, you know, this, that this whole religious culture is really kind of stupid or phony for their emphasis on traditions like this. But we don't realize how subtly these things emerge and how spiritual they seem to be, especially in the beginning. Many rituals and traditions seem to be built on, you know, unshakable spiritual logic. Listen to these questions. Doesn't God want us to honor Him in everything we do? Didn't God command the priests to wash their hands before serving Him? Shouldn't every faithful follower of God have the same devotion as a priest? Isn't every meal sacred to God? Shouldn't we take every opportunity to make ourselves pure before the Lord? Doesn't God say in, in, in His Word, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand by His holy place, he who has clean hands and a pure heart? When these questions are asked like this, we see the unshakable spiritual logic. Yet no matter how much it makes sense, we must ask ourselves, does this line up with God's word? And the tradition of washing your hands before a meal and after the marketplace and your pots, your pans, your vessels and all that, your couches is not in God's word. Verse 17, And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable and he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see what whatever goes into a person from the outside cannot defile him since it enters his, since it enters his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. Makes sense, right? What you eat is digested, then expelled from the body. This is, uh, um, this is not how they were raised and brought up. They were raised to reject certain foods because it will defile the body. It will cause them to sin. Don't eat pork. God's word says don't eat pork. Now Jesus is declaring all foods clean with his teaching, even pork. That's a big one. That's a revolutionary teaching. That means Jesus has given a new law. Eat. Eat without guilt. We are free to eat what we want. That doesn't give us permission to abuse our bodies. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, you know this. Fast food and processed foods uh, can ruin the body. Uh, when we overindulge in, in foods with high sugars, high saturated fats, increase in salt, all that can damage our bodies over time. How, however, the food you eat cannot save your eternal soul. 
Just can't. Verse 20, and he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from, for from within, out of the heart of man come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and they defile a person. We're so com- concerned about the mud on the outside when the source of the mud is the heart. The spiritual food, the spiritual issue is not food, it's the heart. Out of the heart come the worst things, worse than pork. Out of the heart come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. We are so concerned with the outside, we forget about the inside. The heart must be made clean. But how? Believe and confess your sins to the Lord for the forgiveness of sins. The only way to be to have your heart clean of the wickedness is by the Spirit of God taking permanent residence within us. Believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins. Confess with your mouth that He rose from the grave. Then and only then will the Holy Spirit clean your heart and lead to eternal life. What happens when we sin as Christians? Well, we must develop the habit of confession. Not confession for salvation, but confession to have a guilt-free relationship with God. John writes this, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't hold on to failure. Don't hold on to wrongdoing, mistakes, and sins. Let it go. Confess to the Lord and be made clean. Turn to this promise as often as you need to. Verse 24, And from there he rose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Seraphonician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Here comes this desperate mother. We are told she's a Gentile, a Seraphonician by birth. She's not Jewish. That's what we're told. She begs Jesus to cast out the demon from her daughter. How old her daughter? We're not told. How the demon get into her? We're not told. Her mother's desperate. She needs help. Notice what Jesus said. Sounds mean, don't you think? Is he calling her a dog? He may not be saying it directly, but is he saying she is a dog indirectly? Is he calling Gentiles dogs because they're not Jewish? Is he calling women dogs because they are not men? Jesus' response appears uncharacteristic of him. He's helped women already. He healed many, remember, he's healed many, including women. He healed Peter's mother-in-law from a fever. He's healed a woman with an issue of blood, who had an issue of blood for 12 years. He rose a young girl from death. Jesus is not against women. So he he is uh, against non-Jewish people. Maybe that's what's going on, right? Maybe maybe that's why we're told that she is a, a Gentile a Seraphonician by birth. Notice he said, let the children be fed first. Not that the Gentiles would never receive God's blessings. However, let the nation of Israel come first. Remember, the Lord was called first to the house of Israel. Let the children be fed first. Let's continue. Verse 28, And she answered, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. 
And he said to her, For this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child laying in the bed and the demon gone. What she said is amazing. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. What does that mean? Well, Lord, if Jesus, if you're saying children eat first, and it's not right to throw it to the dogs, well, even the dogs get the crumbs. She didn't argue with him and say, Are you calling me a dog? How dare you? No, her attitude is, I'll take the crumbs. Give me the crumbs. She's humble, and she has faith. Even so, Lord... God is merciful. Even the Lord can have mercy on me. Do you hear her heart? Do you hear her attitude? She believed in the mercy of the Lord. Even it was just a crumb. And for that reason, Jesus cast out the demon from her daughter. The Lord is merciful. And he will be merciful to you. Believe in his mercy for yourself and on the behalf of others in your family. Remember, the mother did it for her daughter. We can do it for others as well. Verse 31, Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. He can't hear and he can't speak. And they begged him to lay his hand on him, and taking him aside from the crowd privately, privately Jesus, Jesus doesn't always heal the same way. He took this man away from the crowd. He put his fingers in his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. Why did he spit? Seems kind of gross. He wasn't spitting out of disgust. That's usually the context. I think we, we tend to see spitting. His saliva was used to heal. Remember, Jesus doesn't always heal the same way. Saliva, you know, is, is a lubricant from our, for our mouths. It, it helps us chew and swallow and digest. The, the, the Lord's saliva is a lubricant for this man's tongue so he can speak. The, the healing water of Jesus was used on this man's tongue for... for um, this, this man's tongue to be healed. And the man is letting him choose how he wants to heal him. Maybe it's not just about the saliva. Maybe it's about him allowing the Lord to heal him the way he chooses. Let the Lord heal the, the, the way he sees best. If we were truly to know this man, then we would understand why the Lord chose to do what he did the way he did. The nonverbal the nonverbal actions were what he needed to see this man. Verse 34, and looking up to heaven he sighed and, and said to him, Aftha, that is be open. And his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. This is amazing. He was healed by, by first getting away from the crowd, right? And then the Lord placed his hands in his ears, and, and then uh, the saliva was used on, on, his, on his tongue. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it, and they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf to hear. And the mute speak. Again, Jesus tells, uh, uh, tells them to, to say nothing. Again, they fail to listen. He has a reason for why he's telling them that. Because it's not, a, it's not about the miracles, although they're truly good and amazing. It's about um, coming to him in faith to, to learn. To be changed and transformed. So it's not it's it's not just about the miracles. 
It's also about the truth, the life-changing truth he has to share. Uh, they praise the Lord by saying he's done all things well. Everything the Lord did, he did good. He's, 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 all, he's raised the dead. He's casting out demons. He's feeding the hungry. He healed the leper. He caused the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Everything the Lord does is good. Everything that the Lord desires to do for you is good. Trust in Him. He only has good plans for you. Thank you, Lord, for being good to me. For being good to us. We're going to close right there. Let's pray. Oh God, thank you again for your encouraging word. Thank you for lifting the burdens, the guilt of man's traditions off of us. We don't have to live according to the traditions that oppress us. Your word is liberating your word sets us free because the holy spirit resides in us it, it it changes the way we think he changes the way we feel allowing us to not fight a relationship but to willingly follow in your ways and have a right relationship with you clean our hearts lord help us to confess so that we have clean hearts Help us to be like the Seraphonician woman, to, to, to ask for your mercy, to call on your mercy, to not argue, to not debate, but to come to you in humility and faith. We might have loved ones and family members. We might have, a, we might have somebody in our lives that we need uh, them to be healed or the darkness to be cast. You can do all things because you are in heaven on your throne. Please, God, hear our prayers as we come to you in humility and faith and thanksgiving. You healed the man with who was deaf and couldn't and mute. Truly amazing. Thank you for showing us how good you are. Be good to us. May your goodness follow us today, tomorrow, all the days of our life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.